Hello everybody, welcome back. This is the follow-up to the gingivitis video. This is about periodontitis. Again, I wanted to split these up so make them very short and sweet and simple so they're not super lengthy. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for all the engagement. I so much appreciate it and I'm so glad I can help any one of you on your journey to a super healthy mouth. Periodontitis, what is it? By definition, and my little book from hygiene school, still have it. Periodontitis, the definition. It is inflammation in the periodontium affecting gingival tissue, periodontal ligament, cementum, and supporting bone. So what does that mean? So if you watch the gingivitis video, which I hope you did before this, the difference between gingivitis and periodontitis is bone loss. So again, if we go to healthy mouth, gingivitis, the bone level is where it's supposed to be. Your probe duct, your pocket reading is between a one and a four millimeter. There is no bone loss here. The bone height is where it's supposed to be. You have an infection, your gums are swollen, they're bleeding, they're tender when we probe and they'll be tender when you get your teeth cleaned. Now, if we get into periodontitis, then there's stages, early, moderate, and severe, mild, moderate, severe. There's grading systems, there's staging systems of a, on a professional level that we can use to grade your mouth. So if we go to early stages of periodontitis, you can now see, this is our healthy side again, this is our disease side. So you can see the bone has started to dissolve, to disappear. This is representation of tartar that is down on the root surface, because again, healthy mouth, there's no tartar under here. Our pocket depth is now five millimeter. So in the, so this, this is one, two, and three on this first line. If you cover the black, it's four, and the middle of this is five, at the top of that black line is six. So if I could not see that black line when I probe your pockets, that's a six millimeter. So this is a five millimeter because it's stopping right in the center of that black line. So you can tell, we have some bone loss here. No bone loss here, healthy side again. Bone loss over here, that means this pocket is deeper. You have calcified plaque that's down under here. It's bacteria that has grown. It has sat there, it is hardened. It's like a piece of coral on the tooth that's sitting there and the bacteria are swimming and living around it. So that is now their home. And what happens is the bone doesn't want to be there. This is an infection. The bone is starting to dissolve and disappear and it actually starts to, you lose it. You're losing the support. This is like the foundation of your house. This is what keeps your teeth in your jaw. The bone is what's supporting your teeth. Without this, you're, we'll go to the stages to tell you what'll happen. But this is early, this five millimeters, you remove this, you're not necessarily gonna grow the bone back, but guess what, this pocket will shrink. You get attachment, you get this tissue, instead of it being loose and infected and soft and spongy and bloody, it starts to get pink again, healthy, it'll adhere back to the tooth. This will shrink to a three, if not a four for sure, if not a three millimeter pocket. This is where floss is no longer effective. If you have bone loss, flossing is no longer effective. You need a water pick, the floss will never reach the base of this pocket. This is where what's called scaling and root planing comes into play. You cannot just have a prophylaxis cleaning. You can't just have a prophy. It's, it's generalized as a prophy, that's the generic term for it where they'll go in and scale your teeth and clean in and around the gums and below the gums, this is gonna require some anesthetic. This is required to get numbed up because this is more uncomfortable get, to get down in the base of this pocket to get it cleaned out. So this is what scaling and root planing requires where then they split your mouth in half and they clean half at a time so they can get down in all of these pockets, clean out this plaque, bacteria, and tartar to remove the infection so you get that tissue adhering back up there. So again, this is a mild case, five millimeter pockets, no problem. We wanna to go to a moderate case. This is now a six millimeter pocket. More bacteria, more tartar, more plaque down here. The bone level has gone down further. So this base of this pocket, you can see the bone level is up a little bit higher in our last picture, it's gone down more. So this is still our healthy side. So you can see this is bone loss. This is where the gum tissue is gonna to start to follow the bone and the more bone that you lose, you lose gum tissue. You start to see the root of the tooth where that's a darker color. This cementum that covers the outside of the root of the tooth is yellowish brown in color. It is not white like your enamel. 
this contrast can make your teeth look dingy and darker so that's where people start to get what's called gum recession and I discussed that in the video if you need to get, know further about that so that goes along with sensitivity so this is where we have moderate periodontal disease and then if we want to go into advanced this is where see now we have almost a nine millimeter pocket here severe bone loss tons of plaque bacteria tartar infection now the gum tissue is shrunken more you can see the roots of the teeth more the gum tissue doesn't fill in the space in between the teeth anymore the spaces look open because these are triangular spaces every tooth touches the one next to it and the bone and the gum tissue are supposed to fill in these spaces so if you want to go back just to gingivitis you see the space is filled in where here in advanced periodontitis, the space is no longer filled in because you've lost bone. The gum tissue follows the bone. You've opened up the space in between your teeth. This again requires scaling and replaning, requires numbing up. Some dentists, if you go and you get, you have a lot of six, seven, eight millimeter pockets, they'll send you to a periodontist, which is who I work for now. And we do do scaling and replaning, but we do it assisted with a perioscope. So if you want to know about the perioscope, you can absolutely search it on YouTube on here. Dr. Kwan is like one of the founders of it. Um, he's out of California. But the, the scope that we use is called perioscopy, and it's a dental endoscope. So it is a tiny camera that we go down into the pocket with. We can actually, we numb you up, and we go down and enter this pocket so we can just gently manipulate the tissue back, and we take an ultrasonic instrument in there we can visually see the roots to remove every ounce of tartar, plaque, and bacteria down in here. So then you, again, you won't necessarily grow the bone back. In some cases, patients do, but you get this tissue to reattach to the tooth, which shrinks the pocket. And that's what we want. We want a smaller pocket. So again, this requires water picking, no flossing, because flossing is going to be super ineffective. But a lot of offices, if you go to a general dentist, they will do they will perform scaling and root planing where they'll numb you up and they clean everything up. And there's some amazing hygienists out there that do excellent work. So if you have scaling and root planing done, if you go back for a reevaluation in six weeks or eight weeks or three months and you don't get a lot of good healing, then I would encourage you to seek out a periodontist. Now, let me just throw a disclaimer out there. I'm not a doctor, I'm a registered dental hygienist. I cannot diagnose, I cannot treat, I cannot tell you anything about your disease. You need to seek out a dental professional, a dentist, in order to get your, di your disease diagnosed and to figure out what you need to do. And there are a range of options. Some people go to a periodontist and they're recommended to have osseous surgery. It would cut the gum tissue and they would flap this open so they can see all of this, they clean it out, then they stitch you back up. It's very expensive, it's a longer recovery because of course you're stitching and they usually do half of your mouth at a time. Where with using the perioscope that we use, there's no surgery, there's no cutting, no stitching. I call it a cleaning on steroids and that cleaning is a generic term because it is, it's periodontal therapy. We're doing a therapy to your mouth. We're doing a very meticulous scaling and replaning to the teeth. It's not just like, woo woo, you're done. We're working in a two millimeter space at a time and we're working all the way around the tooth, all the way down the depth of that pocket. So it's very, very tedious. It's very boring to the patient. We do numb you up for comfort, so you don't feel anything. So it's just a boring procedure. You just gotta keep your mouth open longer. Um, but it is, it's very, very tedious, very meticulous, but we get such fantastic results without having to do surgery on our patients. Now there are patients that do require surgery because they don't get a good result. Some patients just don't heal very fast. Some patients, their bone loss is too severe that they require surgery. But most of the time, almost every single patient comes through the hygiene chair first to get the perioscope therapy. We reevaluate them in two months and then we re-evaluate them again three months after that. So once you have gum disease, it never disappears. When you have bone loss, it never goes away. It's always there because the bone, like I said, doesn't always grow back. So you should get your teeth cleaned 
every three months for the rest of your life. Now there are people that heal extremely well that just there was an extended period of time that they did not go to the dentist. Those patients that say skipped out on two years but have excellent consistent habits at home with their brushing and their water pick and they take good care of themselves and they're pretty healthy for the most part, don't have heart conditions or diabetes or cancers or any other kind of underlying health issue, any autoimmune issue, anything like that. They can usually heal pretty well. And if you maintain, and we, we keep you on the three months because that's the protocol, that it takes 90 days for periodontal disease to start all over again. That's all it takes is 90 days. So I've had, and I've treated patients that only wanna come in every six months. They'll be bleeding, their pocket depths never heal, they're always bleeding because they won't stay on that consistent recall and they're insurance driven. Uh, they only wanna do what their insurance covers. They don't wanna pay for anything out of pocket, which doesn't help them because over time, they're just gonna continue to lose bone in between the teeth because they're constantly having an active infection in your mouth. And when you have a low grade infection, I don't care where it is on your body, it really takes a toll on your heart and your immune system because there's just bacteria swimming around everywhere because it doesn't just stay here, it gets pumped everywhere. That's why we tell you every three months to get your teeth clean. But my point being is there are some people that'll get to four months and they'll get to come in every, only three times a year instead of four. And that happens, it's far and few between, but it happens. But most people that go through a scaling and root planing or go through perioscope therapy, don't ever want to do it again. And on my goal for all of my patients, I only want to do it one time. I don't want to repeat scope therapy on a patient over and over and over again. You should not have to have scaling or root planing done every year. It's not a procedure that's just like routine. Oh, I just do it every year. No, it should be done once in your lifetime. And if they get all the tartar out and they do a really good job and you heal really well, because again, it goes to that periodontal probing. A periodontal probing, when you are a, a, a periodontal patient and you have periodontal disease, that probing should be done every six months. And you should ask, if it's done and the hygienist has a way to type it in without calling the numbers out, then ask her, what do my pocket depths look like? Do I have any fives or sixes? Do I have a lot of bleeding? Ask the questions. Get to know your mouth. Ask them. It's your mouth. It's your information. It's your right to know. Don't ever hesitate to do that. So be aware of what your mouth is doing. Ask them the questions. And if they get irritated, I've said this before, that's not your fault. They're either pressed for time, they're running behind, they just don't wanna answer. It's something more going on. It's not you, the patient. So I want my people to know what's going on. I want them to know their mouth. And when they come in and sit down and start telling me about their mouth, I am so ecstatic because I know everything I tell them, they're gonna understand it better so they learn better, so that they can do better in the future, because that's the goal. Again, to get you healthy and keep you healthy. This is a little longer than I wanted. That's periodontal disease. It is more involved than gingivitis. You can't just reverse it with the cleaning and go back. You can't go backwards. When you have it, you have it. It is maintaining it for your lifetime. You need to maintain the bacteria. You need to keep the bacteria at a minimum. That means constantly disrupting the bacteria. That means dry brushing your teeth in the middle of the day after lunch or while you're sitting there watching TV, just grab a dry toothbrush and run it around your mouth just to disrupt plaque and bacteria. Using little Proxa brushes to go in between your teeth. Using an end tuft brush. Using your water pick once a day, every day. Using an electric toothbrush twice a day for two minutes every time you brush. So these are the things that happen. Even if you use a manual toothbrush, you need to brush for a full two minutes twice a day. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. Your routine should be five minutes a day in the bathroom. Two minutes of brushing in the morning, two minutes of brushing at night, and one minute of water picking. I don't care if it's morning or night or in the middle of the afternoon. You need to spend a minute of water picking. Everything else, a dry toothbrush, the end tuft brush, the Proxa brushes, all of those can be used while you're doing something else. You can carry floss sticks with you and pick at your teeth whenever. They can be done as a mindless activity because you should be able to do them by feel to be paying attention. I hope this helps clear up any confusion that anybody had. If you have any other questions, please drop it in the comments. Thank you all for being here. Again, I can't thank you guys enough. I appreciate it. I'm glad that I'm on your journey with you to a healthy mouth, and I hope that you get there with even one word that I say. So uh, talk to you guys soon. Take care.